good morning to you. Thank you so much for staying on the AM show. It's some 40 minutes after 8. And uh, Benjamin just finished off that conversation about the Oyeripa FM situation. Uh, I know you may have a lot to say about it. Uh, get onto our Facebook page, drop your comments, or you can wait when we get interactive with you. You share your thoughts with us and the rest of the world. But now we're going to have a conversation about uh, the decision of the Council of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology to abolish the junior common room system of hall management by students on campus. Now, this is after the clash between uh, students of Katanga, that's the University Hall, and Kunti Unity Hall. Uh, there are varied reactions to this. Now, we are asking uh, whether these measures put in place, one, are sustainable, and most importantly, whether they can resolve the violence we saw on that campus. We've been joined by security analyst Adam Bonar for a conversation on this. Thank you so much for joining us this morning, sir. Thank you for having me. All right. So uh, before I take your initial reactions, let me just paint a picture uh, for, for many people on how this junior common room system works. So in most universities, you have halls. And in the halls, you have what you call a hall master. And then you have a senior common room made up of lecturers and other people in the hall who are not students. Then there's the junior common room system where all students are a part of and they elect executives to re represent them on the hall's council. So this is uh, what happens usually. I'm told that in most universities, the traditional authorities of halls, and if you know what happened at Katanga, uh, that is the university hall, the students were on a procession, what they call morale building, and they usually have a chief priest or a certain icon who represents the hall when it comes to these traditional activities. So we are told that the JCR collects dues annually for various um, reasons or for various activities run by the hall and they usually will sponsor the activities of uh, the hall like the morale or the procession we saw. So here's what the council decided to do. Let's scrap the JCR system. There are many people who've asked the question who then represents the students when it comes to the hall's council and other uh, councils or other groupings that students will need representation on apart from the SRC. But the council believes that this is the best way to handle this situation, of course, which is not new. Your initial reaction, uh, Adam Bonner, when you look at this decision by the council, do you think that it solves the problem of violence? Hello, Mr. Bonner. Hello, Mr. Bonner. All right, uh, too bad. Uh, I'm told that we have a technical challenge with that. But let me bring in um, the university relations officer of KNUST, Dr. Norris Bakoe. I've just tried to paint a general picture of what happens in universities when it comes to the junior common room. But let me find out from you, Dr. Norris Bekwe, and thank you for joining us this morning. Um, what then happens to student representation on the halls if the JCR system is being scrapped? Okay, thank you. Uh, I guess I'm speaking to Benny. Yes, you are. Okay. So, Benny, so let me give you a, a little background. Uh, uh, and then you understand why the position of the University Council. See, after the 2018 violent demonstration that led to a destruction of several properties uh, and, and, and causing injury and harm to human life, human life in the university, a committee was constituted to, to, to investigate the matter. They came out with some recommendations. One of those is that the university should stop affiliating students to the various halls of residence, the traditional halls of residence. So since 2019, we have not been affiliated students to any of the halls. The halls are, they exist and they, they are there on first come, first step basis. So if you are a student and you, you gain admission to Kwame Kuma University of Science and Technology, you pay your 
academic user fee, and then you proceed to make a reservation in any of the halls. When you are successful, you pay your dues or whatever the hall, uh, whatever fee you are supposed to pay, and then you occupy the hall for one year, and then you move to uh, one of the hostels or around the university. So we have been operating the in, out, out, out uh, policy, where only first year, in fact, some session or a fraction of first year are allowed to stay in the traditional halls of residence. All other students, including continuing students, are supposed to look for accommodation around the university campus. I hope you get that clear. Yes, sir. Yes. So, um, but uh, after this recent class, another committee was constituted by the university management to investigate the causes of this and make recommendations. And then they, they did their work. Uh, and then brought uh, the findings and recommendations. Uh, this has gone to the University Council, and Council has given blessing to it. Now, the issue here, which everyone is talking about, is, is that we are trying to take the hands of students off the management of the halls. I want to say that is not correct. What the University Council is saying is that the current arrangement where we have uh, first years who are living in the hall. Mm -hmm. And those first years have leaders. We have floor leaders, line leaders. That arrangement is what should now be the, the, the normal arrangement now. Okay. Which means that only those who are occupying the hall will be able to help to manage the hall in collaboration with the, the, the hall masters and hall teachers. Mm. So right. when they come to first year, uh, uh, they are given orientation, and then within a short time, just like the way the colleges do it, the colleges and departments do it, uh, they are given orientation, and then they are they left their own leaders from those who are living in the hall. And those leaders will be managing the hall with the whole master than 42. Right, Doc. So, 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 so just, a, just a quick one. I'm, I'm looking at the statement that was released by the university after that emergency meeting. And you're now saying that students will have to be, student leaders will have to be appointed yes. instead of the usual voting system. Yes. Who makes that appointment? And what is the criteria? Well, uh, what is going to happen is this. Uh, when they come first year, when they come, they, when they, the first, the freshers who come to the various halls of residence, uh, they, they, they appoint themselves. They, the floor leaders, the floor leaders, uh, line leaders, they, they, the people decide to volunteer. And then from there, they can proceed to the, how do you call it, the, 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 maybe after some time they will proceed and then perhaps from among themselves, elect those who govern or lead them. Uh -huh. What we are saying simply is that mm. only those who are resident in mm. the traditional halls of residence will be will, will be will become leaders it, it, to Doc, help. Money Doc, is it is it the situation that there has not been yet um, a roadmap or a certain criteria developed for? how this appointment will take place. Because what I'm reading here is not exactly what I'm, 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 the explanation I'm getting from you. Maybe let me read for clarity purpose. With effect from the 2023-2024 academic year, the junior common room system of hall management by students is abolished. This means there will be no student elections for hall executives. The existing governance structure comprising hall councils, hall masters, and senior tutors would continue to operate in the management of the affairs of the halls. In addition, hall fellows will be appointed and assigned. And I'm asking these hall fellows, who will make the appointment and who will assign them? The, the managers, uh, those who are managing the hall, the, All right. the hall, the hall of uh, the hall masters, the directors of the junior students, uh, and the hall tutors. Mm. Okay, yes. just a quick one before I bring in my other guests. And I must mention that we've, we've been able to establish a better connection with Dr. Adam Bonner, who is a security analyst, and my colleague, Nanaya Ojima, who's been on this beat, will be giving our student reactions 
to this latest uh, information from the council. But we, uh, before I go to them, Doc, I've seen in that same release that students are not supposed to be harboring or accommodating persons, including those who've been rusticated, those who, uh, who've been suspended, and some alumni. What is the role of the alumni in all of this violence or in the promotion of it? Oh, right from 2018 uh, up until the recent clash. In all the investigations that have been conducted, uh, it, 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 it emerged that the alumni, some, some alumni, not all of them, some alumni, some dismissed students who are still hanging around the university, some rusticated students have a huge role to play in some of these disturbances that okay. That is it and it came up even in the recent findings of the committee that investigated the recent clash. All right. And okay. and, mm -hmm. and Benny, I, I want to say something. Uh, if currently the police is investigating that matter, making us some arrest. And I wanted to give them the opportunity to do their work peacefully. We don't want to be coming out with too much, too much detail. Sure. And but when they are done and they come up with details, you, all of us, will find out the role that some of these people play. Definitely. I, I'll come back to you shortly. Let me go to uh, Dr. Bonar now. Doc, so this is the decision by the management after an incident of violence. Do you see it solving that problem? This decision to abolish the junior common room system? Uh, the other guest on the other side. Yes, I partially it would solve the, you know, the chaotic nature of some of this, uh, you know, halls. The behavior of students is likely to check it. And uh, you must uh, know that uh, the, what the university uh, relations officer is saying with regards to non-students who are, who are you know, staying on these campuses are one major challenge that uh, cuts across all the universities, including University of Ghana and even UCC. And they are the people who breed, you know, level hundreds and those who are coming in fresh because they've been there. Some of them, I will call them uh, pure criminals. They have no reason to be on this campuses for that matter to be in these halls. Some of them are dismissed students for maybe they don't want to go home for parents to know they are dismissed. So they continue mm. to stay on these campuses, if the person was rusticated or sacked, uh, maybe at level 200, the person will stay on this campus till his colleagues finish, then probably, and they continue to live there. And these are the people who are causing, you know, a great deal of uh, havoc on these campuses. Some of them are national service persons who finished the university because they don't want to step out and rent places for themselves. Well, usually, uh, go into town to go and do the national service and come back and be squatting in this house. And this was, you know, uh, it was one of the things that came out. If you ask me when I chaired the University of Ghana clash last year, it came out. And you, you notice that there are some of these people who, for me, uh, should be in jail. But for some reasons, the university management across board have not in the past dealt with them as criminals. Because if you take what happened recently on the University of Ghana campus, what would a student be doing with, with a firearm? What would students be doing with gasoline? What would students be doing with acid? And so the car that was touched on the University of Ghana campus, they use gasoline. If you are pelting each other with stones and probably other objects, but they've elevated it to using, you know, deadly, uh, call it uh, liquids and deadly uh, things in, in order to perpetuate this dastardly act. So as far as I'm concerned, anything the university management, especially... Hello, Doc? The university become a serene environment 
for academic purposes. What, why do we go to university? You go to the university to acquire knowledge. You don't go to the university to end up becoming some, you know, criminal, some person who is being trained to be a terrorist. And so as far as I'm concerned, I am 100% in support mm. of what KNUST management is doing. And I'm saying this because I have been part of some of the things that have, you know, uh, investigating some of the things that have happened on the University of Ghana campus. And I can tell you that even on the University of Ghana campus, some students came all the way from tech to come and cause the havoc we saw in the University of Ghana campus. If you look at what happened in uh, tech, I am reliably informed that students from some of these public universities traveled all the way to tech and they crisscross, caused commotion and ran back. And so I think that it is high time when we were in, you know, university, we, I mean, we, you demonstrate, you do things as part of student leader, you go out there, you are whipped by the police, you are, but you see, we were not this distracted. So to have these students, you know, turning into the use of gasolines, petrol, and uh, acid, and I'm saying that if these universities do not, you know, deal with this now, a day would come when University of Ghana, KNUST, UCC, and the rest, these students will drive petrol tankers, spread petrol on these campuses, and touch everything, including the human beings. Per the report that came out, per what we, our findings, I mean, I'm not supposed to put out, I mean, the report is still with the university, but it was that, you know, chilling what some of these students uh, wanted to do. And so as far as I'm concerned, I think that uh, in order not to put anyone in a panic mood, I think that I would want my children, I mean, my son is it's about entering the university. Would you, would I want my son to enter University of Ghana and be resident of uh, maybe a Commonwealth Hall when uh, he's likely to be trained to be something else that I'm not expecting? Mm. I'm sure they have traditions that are, good, uh, that are supposed to have, you know, trained them well, but it looks like this generation are turning out to be something else. And the leaders of this university owe it as a duty to deal with it. He mentioned the issue of uh, the, you know, rearranging it. You come to, for instance, Commonwealth Hall. So you have the vice chancellor and the university council. They have no hand in who becomes a hall master or tutor and the, and, you know, and the like. And so if you are a hall master, you are not, your allegiance is not to the university. Your allegiance is to the hall. How can you tell me that you have President Nanado being president and his ministers, you know, are they, 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 their allegiance is to probably their tribe, but not to the Republic of Ghana. Once that happens and there is an issue and you call them, they tell you they saw nothing, they heard nothing, they smelt nothing, they have no report. And so where do you go to? So I think the management of this hall, the council of the university, management of the university should be deeply involved or else mm. I'm telling you on authority that we would one day wake up and tech would have been bent down in ashes, Lebanon would have been bent down in other ashes and UCC would follow suit. So I Doc, think that it is, they, they, should, they should put their feet down and make sure these things are resolved. It, once and for all. You, you said you didn't want to put us in panic mood, but that sounds quite alarming. Um, but no, I'm, I'm, being, I'm being sincere with it. And so let's say the way it is, instead of usually dancing around it, when it happened on Legon, you interviewed me, your station interviewed mm. me, and I told you that if this thing is not dealt with, mm. it would go to tech. It didn't take one week. Right, we doc. saw it in tech. Right, Doc. So, so you said, I mean, you admit, you say you support the university's decision, the university council's decision, but you say this will partially solve the problem of violence. What then, or what other measures or what other decisions will bring this problem to totally to its knees? Oh, as for students and young people and their behavior, you cannot take away sometimes people making you know human mistakes but i have said that the investor security you know the public i mean these investors including tech they must beef up their security they must begin to learn from what the current ghana police service is doing 
using heavily informants. Use some of these students who sometimes have no food to eat, who can't pay their you know, facility user fees. Use them. Let them be a source of giving you intel, intelligence. So they gather intelligence about a plan to go and destroy stuff, to demonstrate, to do other stuff that are uncalled for. Anyone who brings you information that will check, or that will come to be credible, you give the person 2,000 or 1,000. They should have that regime there. Once you begin to do that, this radicalism and heavy handedness on the part of the student will reduce. Apart from that, some, I mean, KNUSC has already taken the step to put in CCTV. So uh, they have been able to arrest students. CCTVs, but the CCTVs, I'm not sure whether KNUSC is manned 24 7. I want to see a situation where these CCTVs are all over the halls. The other thing has to also do with the university management themselves will have to come and probably come down to the level where they learn about security. They learn about how you know security must work because most of these universities have uh, you know a security committee that is usually chaired or that is led by somebody who is you know who is a non-security person, very mm. academic. And usually they have no knowledge how to preempt something that is supposed to happen. And so I think that they have to begin to look at opening their tentacles, bringing in other people to help them manage their security because then if they don't do that, things will get out of hand. Also pay, paying their security very well. You go to most of these universities, security guards are not paid well. And if the URO of KNUST is listening to me, I will tell him that you cannot employ people who sometimes are qualified, uh, probably with the requisite qualification to enter the Ghana police service as a, maybe a constable. And you pay the person probably uh, less than his counterparts in the Ghana police service. So I would say garbage in, garbage out. They should bring that level to a certain standard where you, you, the investor security are well paid and well resourced. If you look at today, the Ghana police and the other security services, it has become something that most young people would want to join because I can tell you that police officers are paid more than teachers. And so a teacher would want to resign from being a teacher to be a police officer or a military officer. So right. they should do that because once they do it, you would have people who probably are willing to have the passion to serve the invest in terms of security. All right, Doc. Uh, let me go to my colleague who's joining us from Kumasi, Nanayal Jima. Hello, Nanayal. Uh, he's an old student of KNUST himself. Uh, Nanayal, how are the students reacting to the council's decision to scrap the JCR system? So since Saturday, when the council's uh, resolutions were made public, there have been a lot of reactions from these students on campus. And there are a number of uh, students who do not side with the, the council, for instance, and when it comes to scrapping the JCRC system, the, the, the students are asking a lot of questions about the decision that was made by the council. Now, uh, they believe that the JCRC is not directly um, connected with whatever is happening on the campus, and they see it as one of the attempts for the university council or the management to take control of all the things that are happening on the campus. For instance, um, th there are questions um, why Republic Hall, um, Queen's Hall, and also Independence Hall will all have a world be, 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 be under a system where their leadership not, you know, have no hand in whatever happened between Ponti and Katanga. So if there should be sanctions, according to some of the students, it should be for the leadership of Quinty or Unity Hall and University Hall, and the other halls should be exempt. So they believe that um, one of the halls cannot cause such a mayhem on campus and the punishment remitted to all the other um, leadership of these halls. Furthermore, they believe that if now we are handing everything over to the um, hall masters, or the university management, or the people that are appointed to the university management. We already have this system. Now, if there is something happening on campus, or if 
um, Kunti or, uh, or um, University have invited students from other campuses to help them or to join them as they celebrate their hall. These mm. hall masters who are in charge of the whole day-to-day -day, um, administration of the halls, those who code the finance and all, everything uh, and other things in these halls, they should have intelligence of the coming of these students. So if these other students from other halls could cause any you know, mayhem or something, if these people, if they are not aware of these things, they should also be punished. So they believe that meting out punishment just to the JCRC executives, it's, it's very unfair, and they believe that it should be restored. But the university management should find other innovative ways of channeling the energies of um, students from both the university and, and unity hall to, towards, a short, towards good courses, so that um, we wouldn't see um, um, another clash as mm. as we, we've witnessed in the past few weeks. So there are a lot of reaction from the from the students, even though they agree with some of the resolutions. They believe that the suspension of the JCR of the JCRC system of governance in these halls um, it, it's rather unfortunate, and the university council will have to look at it again. Right. Uh, Nanaya Aljuma, the reporting uh, uh, for us from Kumasi, telling us how the students have been reacting to the University Council's decision. I've still got the University Relations Officer, Dr. Norris Bakwe, uh, with us on the line. So, Doc, I I'm sure a lot of people are wondering what the correlation between the violence we saw or the violence we've been seeing over the years and the existence of the JCR is. I'm sure once we're able to draw that correlation, many may be able to understand why the council took the decision it, it took. Briefly, are you able to tell us how there is a direct link between the existence of the JCR and the violence we've been seeing over time? Yes, um, thank you very much. Uh, let me correct this misinformation. Uh, your reporter from um, uh, Lab FM was putting out some information that Students think that uh, management is trying to stifle uh, them or maybe take their hand, win their hand off the administration of the whole. That is not a, that's not correct. What we are saying is that since 2019, and I want to repeat this again, uh, since 2019, we stopped affiliating students to the various halls of rest. And so, if a student wants to say he wants to come and contest for election uh, to be a JCRC executive for us. So on what basis? There's no basis. What we are rather proposing, or what council is proposing, is that let those who are occupying the halls continue to manage the halls with their hall teachers and hall masters. Now, it will interest you to note that, um, and I, 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 I hesitate to talk about these details because it, the police is investigating it, but just to satisfy your curiosity, uh, it emerged during the investigation, that a lot of those students who were engaged in this, those who, who were leading the charge, were uh, students who have been dismissed, rusticated, some alumni of the university. You understand the point? Mm -hmm. And what happened? It also emerged that those people were harbored in the halls of residence by the so-called executives 24 hours to this uh, uh, demonstration or this violent class. Now, again, when these executives were inviting their counterparts from the, how do you call it, uh, uh, University of Cape Coast, Kathleen Hayford, to be precise, they did not inform the hall executive, or the hall master, sorry, the hall master, and the directors of the student affairs. Why would a student leader invite other people from other universities or other places, or even non-students, to participate in a lawful activity, if they call it lawful, which is part of their socialization, in a lawful activity, in an investment, and cause distraction to the investment property. I, 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 I can tell you that if you have seen the video footage of, of what happened recently, you will be surprised why a student will be so charged with a catalyst, use machete, Iron rock, uh, knife, 
stones, huge stones, at other colleagues who are students. And the, the, the underlying thing is this. Most of those people who were, who were seen in the video were not students. Some of them were non-students. Do you understand the point? I do. And who Listen. brought them? Who brought them? Is there a negative of, of those four? Unity did it. Katanga did it. And so, management has said that, okay, to allow peace of mind to, to reign on the university campuses, where we don't have to be constantly uh, looking at what is happening, who is going to head to, let us focus. Let's, 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 let's mm. this arrangement, the, new, the, the, the current arrangement, where the lead, those people who are occupants of this hall emerge as leaders of the hall and then help the hall teachers and the hall masters to manage the affairs of the hall. Right. Doc, should we you expect... Cannot have, mm. Benny, you cannot have somebody coming from uh, a different country or a different home coming to manage the affairs of, a, 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 of your home. Right. You right. So, so, Doc, should we expect more uh, interventions or measures or what is the council's... Um, attitude going to be towards this is it that well, they, is, they, is, they, is, they, sorry sorry let me let me just um, is it that you're doing this and you're studying over time to see what the reaction will be or this is just an initial reaction pending more interventions well i i i am unable to tell you if there will be there will be no more intervention but uh what as i said it is based on the recommendation of the fact finding committee that council acted. Right. Let us allow this to work and see uh, how it is going to go. As to what, uh, what management or council will do in future, it, 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 is, it is determined or it will be determined by uh, the situation every time on the ground. Right. Okay. As but, as... but the number one reason for which mm. we exist, as my friend uh, Bonat said, is to, is to train mind. Mm. And Benny, I can tell you, if you go to all sectors of, the, of this economy, K and USC students are performing credit, creditably. And we, we need to give the university opportunity to exist in peace of mind, where we can be, so that we can continue to, continue to do the work that we have been doing. Right. We right. cannot always be in the news for one bad uh, class or the other. Mm. Situation where Students come to university with cutlass, with machete. I think the place is a war zone. It, it should be. It should be something that all of us should view right. with a pinch of salt. Mm. And so I want to encourage, or I want to invite all those people who have contrary views to allow the decision of the council to reign, and so that we all will see the benefit that will come from it. Have you already started seeing opposition to this decision? I'm asking this because of your last statement. And also, I, 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 remember, I remember what happened, uh, I think, about in, two, in 2018, uh, when there were, there were talks about converting these, uh, the university hall, that's Katanga, to a mixed hall. And there was serious opposition from uh, the alumni, and we saw some interventions, people going to see chiefs and all that. Are you beginning to see an opposition to this decision by the council? Well, uh, largely, we have had commendations from the alumni, uh, the leaders of the alumni. And then we have also had commendations from very well-meaning Ghanaians who see this as the best decision that they are taking. Mm. In fact, if you listen to the security expert, uh, my friend Adam uh, now. He, he tells you that if we don't take this measure, if we are not careful, one day we wake up in the morning and the whole university is bent down. And I don't think that is what all of you are wishing for. Right. Okay, let me come to you, Doc. Uh, you earlier painted a really bad picture that happened at the University of Ghana, where you saw students with acid, some with weapons. We've just been told by the URO of KNUSD that a similar situation happened, machetes, um, iron rods, and he uses the term charged. 
And uh, that's what you usually see in such situations where young people appear, and some people will use that word advisedly, but appear to be somewhat in a different light. You know, it's, it's as though they were possessed and something has taken over their minds and, and their actions and they are, they are meting out such violence towards uh, fellow students. But the question is, why? When we see what happens in a, in a war situation or in a conflict situation, we usually know why people will be so passionate. Uh, people will uh, carry weapons to either defend themselves or attack their enemies. But in this situation, what is causing all of this? I, I fail to understand why students will do something like this. What is the cause? What is the, the underlying current that is feeding all of this violence? Hello, Dr. Bona. Do I have Dr. Bona on? Too bad. Uh, it appears we lost uh, Dr. Bona there because uh, I was just trying to get an understanding on, on what will cause students to be this violent, you know? Um, well, uh, uh, Ben, I can give you some... some, some, some oh, some, that, that's, that's some great, Doc. Uh, yes, if you have some clues, please, please. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, you see, Ben, there, there are one... Six. We have various reasons that we account for this. Uh, but one of the, the, the cardinal uh, cause of this is anger in the minds of certain people, criminals. I would say I call them criminals because if, if you are a student and you come to university, you are coming to, to study, <coughs> acquire knowledge, and go back and then impact society positively, isn't it? But <coughs> when you have students who come to university to come and court mayhem, court havoc, uh, some of them are thieves, uh, some of them are cri they're engaged in criminal activities. And when science change, uh, 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 when these students are sanctioned, either by dismissal or rusticated, then they have this internal, this anger that is in them to pay back. And also because over time, because of this issue about uh, let's, just, let's give it a human face, let's give it a disciplinary action, human face. Let us not destroy the future of students. The university has been very hesitant in terms of publishing or name and shaming of those students. And so when students are disciplined, we don't publish it widely. You understand the point? Mm. And those students even don't want their parents to know that they, they have been disciplined. And so they don't go home. They continue to collect school fees from their parents. They hang around. And then they, on weekends, they come and then charge with their colleagues to try to pay back or to harm someone. Because for them, the continuous distraction of the name of the university is their, their principal goal. Again, we have some, a number of students who are on drugs. Mm. We have a number of students who are on drugs. And this is across the universities, all of them. All right, Doc, right. Is, is there a history to this, especially with the, with the University Unity Hall rivalry what is the root cause and how and how is this rivalry transferred to new students who who come to the university into now, these various now homes? this is what i i would say you see this rivalry has been has been there since uh, the inception of the university and it is is what we call it's an aspect of socialization but you see even the alumina are saying that no the rivalry that we used to engage in was not this kind of distracted drive. You understand the point? Mm. It was a sort of healthy competition where they do A, B, C, they want to outdo each other just to show uh, that they, they, they are the one on top. But some of these criminals, you understand the point? Criminals, I call them criminals, uh, have decided to indoctrinate the new one, by, by giving a different twist to this writing. And so you have students who are coming, and then before they say, oh, we, we have to be able to beat uh, students and, 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 and destroy this and destroy that. But, uh, uh, Benny, last uh, two weeks, no, it's not even last, I think last week, you saw the police picked up one of the young men who was on social media threatening that he was going to kill five students. You understand the point? Why would a student who has come to university have the mentality of, of planning to kill colleagues? You don't understand. 
Obviously, that person may have been uh, uh, indoctrinated or given some wrong perception about the issues. Right. Doc, so this is what is happening. Mm, mm. We'd we'll have to leave it here for now, uh, but we will stay in touch with you, uh, trusting that the uh, university's decisions will yield some good results. Uh, but that uh, that's Dr. Norris Bakwe. He is the University Relations Officer of the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Uh, earlier, we had Dr. Adam Bonai. I just wanted to wrap up with him when we lost him via Zoom there. We also heard from Nanai Aljima, who is with Love FM in Kumasi. Let's stay in the Ashanti region uh, because uh, the youth of a town near Darban have blocked the road, protesting heavy traffic on that stretch. And that's happening now. And uh, we will be bringing you details on that. Emmanuel Bright Quirk, who joins us live uh, from Kumasi. The police is trying to convince the residents to make way drivers who use this stretch to use, but it, it appears it's could be futile because most of them are saying it's been several times, they've been calling several times for the government to heed their cry, but as it appears, their roads have not been fixed for the past two years now. So the police is actually convincing the residents over here so they can make way for the cars that use this particular stretch to move through. But after several hours, it's been almost two hours since they blocked the roads with um, some blockades. That is, you see some chairs and um, tables over there. They blocked the roads that they are demanding that the government comes to fix their roads for them or face their roads in the subsequent or the next general elections. So that is what is currently happening. So as you can see, that is the police trying to convince some Jews of this area. They are trying to convince the police. The police trying to convince these youth so they make way for the cars that use this particular stretch. Since we came this morning, I can confirm that some cars were stranded. Even an ambulance that was trying to convey a sick person or a patient to the hospital has not been able to use the road. The ambulance had to turn. The ambulance had to turn. So as you can see, that is a commander trying to calm down one of the residents. So they make way for the roads to be used by these motorists on this particular stretch. <laughs> Any rep from local government attending to the concerns of these young people? At the roads, some, some, some people are trying, a road user is trying to come through, but it appears the residents are actually not happy that the roads are actually open for road users to use. So let me find some of them and then engage them. So please, let me engage with you. Yes, <laughs> 
Some residents that are some aggrieved residents demanding that the government comes to fix their road. They've paid almost 500 cities to some, um, they paid some 500 cities for them to pay. Okay, they paid some 500 cities, they, they've paid some 500 cities for these highway authorities or some authorities to demand their roads to make their roads fixed that is why they are demanding so most of them are calling that the government should come and fix their roads or face their wrath by in the next general election so Okay. So that is another resident over there demanding that their 500 cities should be used to fix the road. As we speak, some people allege that there is this particular God on this stretch that is making the authorities not fix this particular road. That is why this road has been here for it has been left abandoned. So let me give you a, a clear view of how the road is like. So from when you're coming from um, Ahoju runabout through to Sokobain, there's a dual carriage road on this particular stretch. Once you get to the Dabain main um, community, you realize that this road is cut short. And even from Ampami to the Sokobain community on the other side of the road, the road has also been asphalted, but within the municipal or within the community itself, there is no tarred road. The roads are just deplorable, as you can see on your screens. It is muddy. Um, there is no asphalt on this particular stretch. It's muddy. That is why the residents are demanding that the government comes to fix their road for them. Although we have an indication. Emmanuel Brightquake joining us from Ampami in Kumasi, giving us details of that demonstration by residents there. Uh, he will remain there. Hopefully, uh, the, the police and local authority will be able to resolve the situation. But as you can see, it appears that there is some traffic flow uh, compared to what we saw when we joined him. You're watching the AM show. We'll be right back. When we come back, we'll be telling you more about the University of Ghana at 75. Do stay.